Okay, in the co-main event, what a fucking fight. In the middleweight division, Gregory Robocop Rodriguez defeated Chidi Enju Kawani by TKO. Official time coming at 1 minute 27 seconds of round number two. Omar, in a back-and-forth battle at 185 pounds, your boy Hobocop gets it done. <laughs> uh, give us your reaction. So I think I'm just going to call him Robocop from now on because he called Man, himself call Robocop. Him? He called oh, himself we, Robocop. We know it's Robocop, but we well, have deemed it Hobocop. Hobocop. I have never, I had, I agreed. I have never heard him say Robocop, though. So in my head, he said it, Hobocop. But of now course. that I've heard him say Robocop, it kind of takes away from the myth oh, just man. a little bit. <laughs> Uh, but if you guys want to keep saying Hobo Cop, I'm down. That's, that's well, I'm never saying anything else. <laughs> um, what a fucking fight. What an absolute barn burner this was. Uh, and the crazy shit is he kind of thought in the beginning of this fight, especially with the way it was going, that Chidi was just going to put on another one of his performances. Um, caught uh, RoboCop coming in, yeah. you know, almost for a takedown and ate an entirely made knee right in his face um i don't even want to know what bone what what did what to cause the split in the middle of his forehead to do what it did but it did and oh, there was man. vein that was visible a whole tube of blood that your body makes was absolutely Dude, was that outside of his body it i was, was looking at the that fuck, picture trying to figure out what the fuck that was wow it's the biggest vein. vein i've ever seen in my life yeah. He's not like human. That shit was so thick. I don't understand. That's how cyborgs thing, look, guys. bro. Here's the thing about cuts like this and many other cuts like it that have happened in the UFC. If I was in a fight and got a cut like that, I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, stop, stop, stop. hundred <laughs> percent. These I mean, guys I'm get dead. cut like I'm this. I'm dying. Let me call my family before I die. <laughs> Take me to the hospital. <laughs> These mean, guys get gashes on their face and they looks like they don't even feel it. Yeah. They like put the Q tip I mean, in there, yeah, <laughs> all the way in. And to be and to be fair, as soon as he got hit with that knee, he took maybe a second to be rocked, and then started shooting immediately back at Chidi with punches that were going to knock him out if they had landed cleanly. It, I mean, it was a it was a wild fight. It was, it, and then at one point, obviously, RoboCop comes back, and and like lays out Chidi in the same round. Chidi has to get back up. It has to fight and be defensive. This became a back and forth brawl in the first round. And by the second round, it was like Chidi. I don't even think Chidi really thought he was going to end up being in those positions for this fight. Mm -hmm. But the man got worked. The man got worked. He got put in some really uncomfortable positions. His cardio was tested. And, and Hobo Cop came out on top, man. And good for him. He worked for that fight. He worked for that win. And he deserves all the credit involved in getting it. So good for him. And I'm glad the UFC spends money on good doctors that can sew people up. Because he oh, looked yeah. immaculate after he, he got did. sewed up. He really did. He looked fantastic. Yeah. So That's good really good nice on guy. them. Because he looked That's, terrible yeah. beforehand. That Jesus. scar is going to blend in really well to all those. He has like a lot of folds and like yeah. wrinkly folds on his it's brow. Helpful. helpful. Mark, I feel like 185 yeah. pounds is such a great weight class for just bangers like this. You're dealing with yeah. re very large men who cut down to 185 who just can crack. Uh, what was your take on this cracker between Gregory Rodriguez and Chidi Anjokwani? Yeah, I mean, Omar nailed this, but this thing was just a car crash from start to finish. I mean, Chidi hurts... Rodriguez right out of the gate with the knee, gives him the third eyebrow. Rodriguez is somehow unfazed, continues to take damage. And for like three minutes, you know, he couldn't really touch Chidi. Like it was kind of playing out pretty much how we thought it w was going to because of Chidi's technique advantage. But then Rodriguez did what he does. He somehow just crashes inside and starts swinging wildly. And these guys can't get him off, off them. He, it, he does it every single fight. And... You know, he, he gets matched up with guys like a Chidi, and you're like, oh, he's not going to be able to do that. Chidi's too long. He's got too good technique, too much power. He'll keep him honest. 
And he still does it. He just crashes into that range. He starts throwing hammers. Guys start to back up. They can't reset themselves, you know, on their game. And and as Omar said, he ends up dropping Sheedy before that round's even over. So mm-hmm. crazy round one. It didn't even feel like we were going to make it to round two for, for a while there. Um, then you got to get through Rodriguez getting examined by the doc. You're thinking maybe this isn't even going to see round two this way. He gets to go out there. They go right back to scrapping. And, and before you know it, he gets this real nice head throw takedown. And honestly, at that point, Sheedy didn't even look tired to me. He didn't look hurt. He was defending. He was looking for ways to get up. And then Rodriguez lands that short elbow on the ground. And I think it hurt. Like, I don't, I feel like the commentary was kind of just like, oh, Sheedy got overwhelmed. I thought he looked fine. And then all of a sudden, that little short elbow landed, and all of a sudden, Sheedy didn't react. And I think Rodriguez saw it right mm-hmm. away, hit him with another short elbow, which had him badly hurt. And then that's when the barrage of punch, punches started. So I think Rodriguez just snuck in a beautiful short elbow as soon as he got that uh, that side control. Mm-hmm. And that was that. So incredible job from Rodriguez to gut that out. Um, that win from him, I think, makes Armin Petrosian look really good since he's the only guy that's beaten Rodriguez in the UFC thus far, which in turn makes Kyle Bahalio look really good for having beaten Petrosian. And this is kind of going along with your point of middleweight quietly has like a bunch of interesting dudes in this 15 to 25, 30 range right now who look like killers, who, who are going to be interesting as they continue climbing up in this division and kind of taking on some of these established names. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Speaking of established names, Omar, let me give you the chance to go first this time talking about matchup potential for Mr. Hobocop. At 185 pounds. If you're the matchmaker for the UFC, what, what are you doing with Hobocop next? <laughs> there's there's one fight that, and, and this is probably why I don't have the job of a matchmaker, but there's one fight <laughs> that just seems so utterly ridiculous and yet equally as interesting at the same time. So now hear me out. Okay. What if Gregory... Hobocop Rodriguez fights Anthony Hernandez, who also just won this yeah, past yeah. weekend. We're going to talk about Anthony him Hernandez side. might be one of the most unassuming human beings in the 185 pound division. If I had Anthony Hernandez stand next to Hobocop and you didn't know who those two men were, and I told you they got, they're about to get into a fight, there's no way. That you choose Anthony Hernandez to win that fight. And yet, that man has probably every opportunity to win that fight just as much as Hobocop does. So it makes for... I'm, it just... It makes me very curious. Well, I mean, his, his nickname is Fluffy, so that's pretty unassuming. <laughs> he ain't even that Fluffy no more. It's true. No, yeah, not. Man. Yeah. yeah, not at all. Mark, what's your take? Do you, do you agree and disagree? I mean, I have no problem with that fight. It'd be super interesting to see, you know, a guy who, I mean, we're going to talk about Hernandez in a minute, but a guy who can put on the pace that he can, you would think might be able to handle these barrages from Rodriguez. So it'd be really interesting. Um, I was going a different route. I was going to kind of give, is it Rodriguez? Should I be saying Rodriguez here? I believe he goes Uh, by Rodriguez, Rodriguez. which is sort of the Uh, exception for Brazilians. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was going to give him a pretty significant jump here. I mean, he's 4-1 and one now. He has the one loss, as I said, to Petrosian, but he's 4-1 and one in the UFC. Massive performance here in a co-main event. Guts it out. I was going to give him a jump. He loves to scrap. Another guy who loves to scrap is Chris Curtis. And I think those two might just swing until someone fell over or 15 minutes ticked away. Okay. I like it. Chris Curtis coming off a loss. Don't care. Because usually I mean, they Chris match Curtis up. is also ranked 10 plus spots. 18. Above. That's true. That's true. Rodriguez, yeah. 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 I like it. I still like it. I'm, I'm a Chris Curtis fan for sure. I'm a fan of a lot of guys on 185 now. Yeah. There was a point where I was thinking about he probably should get somebody higher ranked than Anthony Hernandez. But like I said, even with the Chris Curtis call out or the pick. I'm still just stylistically more interested to see him against Anthony Hernandez. I'm just so curious. And I'm sure we're going to get the update, so I'll wait to ask you that on where these guys are 
rankings wise. Just for shits and giggles, what about Chidi, man? Chidi came into this fight with a lot of hype because he's been on a tear, <clears throat> knocking dudes out. Uh, Mark, let me stick with you this time. Give me a name at 185 uh, where you think Chidi, Chidi should get matched up with next. So, yeah, he takes a loss here. It definitely slows him down a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to give him a chance to kind of bounce right back into the mix. Um, Jun Young Park is another guy who recently took a loss to Gregory Rodriguez, but who has looked to it otherwise. I know he's booked against Joseph Holmes, I think, like in two weeks here or something along those lines, but that's a guy who I expect him to beat. And if he does, I think him and Chidi are in pretty similar places. Sure. I think that could be a banger. Omar, you have any other suggestions for Bang Bang? Yeah, the irony is this is the one where I feel like I'm going to go up on this one just because Chidi still has a lot of, uh, you know, recognizability. Um, his style is still very interesting. I also think that that fight was, frankly, that fight was 50-50 until it wasn't. So, you know, I don't I don't really give him too much shit for how that fight went down. Um, I think a fight between him and Ian Einish would be interesting to see. Not to mention it would be an opportunity to take a, a pretty decent step up in the rankings as well. Nice, nice. All right, let's move on. 